guys, Laurie Vitale, and on this episode of Laurie in the Kitchen, I want to show you how to make a really easy but delicious banana squash mac and cheese. I love this recipe. My daughter loves this recipe. I think everyone loves this recipe. It's good, it's filling, and it's easy, and it just screams for comfort food. Let me run you through the list of ingredients because it's not very big right now. We're just going to start off with some banana squash that I've just peeled and diced, and a little bit of onion. Not too much because I think onion can be really overpowering. So I've got my oven preheated to 375. I'm gonna drizzle my squash and onions with a little bit of olive oil, light olive oil, doesn't have to be anything extra, and a good pinch of salt. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roast this banana squash just to sort of intensify the sweetness, keep all the nutrients in there, and it's gonna be just phenomenal because when you roast something, it just develops a deeper, sweeter flavor. So I'm just gonna give everything a toss, and I'm just gonna pop this into the oven for 20 minutes to half an hour or until however long it takes for the butternut squash to get nice and tender. In the meantime, get a big pot, fill it with water, bring it to a boil, and have that ready as well because you're gonna need that to be ready for when this comes out for the pasta. So just get everything going so that it can all work harmoniously together. Pop this in. My squash was in the oven for 30 minutes. In the last 10 minutes, I went ahead and cooked my elbow pasta as well. You can cook any pasta your heart desires. I've kept the oven on because I'm gonna make like a little bread crust topping and then pop it back into the oven so it gets nice and crispy. I've got some shredded cheeses here. I've got Monterey Jack, cheddar, and Parmesan. And I've got, also got some breadcrumbs, a little bit of melted butter, a little cream cheese, and a little bit of stock. Well, it could be veggie stock or it can be chicken stock, whichever your heart desires. In the blender, I am going to add all of the cooked squash. If you want to, and you don't want to even want to use stock, you can just use a little bit of the starchy cooking water from the pasta, and you can omit that all together. But I do think that it adds a little bit of veggie stock, adds just a little bit of extra flavor, and I like that. So I'm gonna add that all in here. Don't wash the pan, because you're gonna put everything back in to go into the oven so that the top can crisp up anyway. Put your squash in there, it smells so good. I'm gonna add cream cheese. Mix this really creamy without having to add just a ton of heavy cream. My stock, I'm gonna start with half of this and then add the rest and go ahead and puree it until it's really nice and smooth. Not too thin, lovely, thick and creamy. Pour that gorgeous creamy puree right in. And along with that, I'm gonna move quickly so I can get this into the oven and get it in my belly. <laughs> and along with that, I'm gonna add most of my cheese. I would say about yeah, three quarters of my cheese. And you're just gonna stir it right in. And then look in here. I mean, that is heaven on a plate or in a bowl. Now, you don't have to pop this into the oven. You can add all of the cheese and then this turns into really good, delicious stovetop mac and cheese. You know, the kind, the kind you grew up with, the kind that you love. Let me get my little mapine. Uh, but you know, I like to take things a little bit over the top once in a while. And I'm gonna, you can see how cheesy and delicious that is. Right? Look at that. That is gorgeous. Add that all in there. And I'm gonna just pop this into my oven. My oven's still hot at 375 because that's what it was on to cook the squash. I'm gonna just make this nice and even. I mean, that is it's pretty epic for you to sit on myself. Take the rest of this cheese, sprinkle that over the top. I can't wait to feed this to Mia tonight because she loves it. And then I just take this is some Italian breadcrumbs, plain breadcrumbs will do. This is a little bit of butter, just a little bit of melted butter. Why did I put my spoon? Where did I put my spoon? You know what, it's okay. Use our hands. And you're gonna sprinkle this sand-like mixture over the top, and that just makes for a really crispy lid on your mac and cheese. And I don't know about you, but that screams comfort, comfort to me. So I'm going to pop this back in about 10 minutes or so, and then we're going to dig in. 
Oh yeah. After 10 minutes, the top is a lovely golden brown and crispy. The cheese on the top is all melted. And I'm ready to dig into this. Oh, listen to that. Oh, look at that. Look at that glorious. I mean, who doesn't love a bowl of mac and cheese? I don't know, but I do. I don't taste the butternut squash at all. It's just creamy. It's a little bit tangy from the cream cheese. If you think cream cheese is too tangy, then add heavy cream in its place. Just not as much. I would do about a quarter cup of heavy cream to a quarter and a cup of stock. But hey, it's up to you. I like a little bit of that tanginess because it balances the sweetness from the butternut squash. Mm. And it's cheesy on the top, it's just perfection. You just need to make it this week, this weekend, whatever floats your boat, you need to make this because it's so good, so easy. Kids are gonna love it, you're gonna love it. Go to lartinthekitchen.com for the written recipe. Hope you enjoy spending time with me and I will see you next time.